So if you're building your first home server, the first app you should install is Home Assistant. Home Assistant is a completely locally managed home automation platform. It can really change your life when it comes to basic things like automating lighting, all kinds of automation around the home lab and your house in general, and it's very useful. It's completely self-controlled, so how much data you share with the internet and the cloud depends on what devices you choose to integrate and what approach you choose to take, but it's all up to you. And that's why I love Home Assistant so much. It's an excellent platform to build on, to build automations, to integrate everything you have together in one place. So today, I'm gonna to walk through installing Home Assistant on my ultimate home server project, this little NAS here. So in a past video, I set this little guy up as a Proxmox server, and that was the first episode of my ultimate home server series. Now we're gonna to add to the ultimate home server by adding Home Assistant to it. This little box is absolutely plenty to run Home Assistant. It does not need a lot of resources. So if you have something relatively powerful, like an old desktop or a NAS like this, or an Intel NUC or something, it's a great idea to run Home Assistant in a virtual machine, and I'm gonna show you how today. As a bonus, I've got this Zigbee dongle too, and we're gonna pass this through to the virtual machine using USB pass-through, so our Zigbee network still works even though we're virtualized. And this same approach would work with any USB dongle, be it Zigbee or Z-Wave, RTL433, any of that stuff. So let's jump on in, shall we? So the page you're interested here is homeassistant.io slash installation slash Linux. So if we go there, they have the links to download the virtual machine image in three different formats, VDI, QCOW2, and VMDK. We're gonna need the QCOW2, but we'll get to that one a little bit later. First, we need to create the virtual machine. They recommend two gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, and two vCPUs. And this is the same setup that I use in my own Home Assistant install. If you're running some really heavy add-ons like Frigate NVR, for example, you might need some more RAM and CPU power, and you might wanna do storage a little bit differently too. But if you're not doing that, you should be fine with these recommendations. And that's what I'm gonna use for this video. So hopping over onto Proxmox here, you can see I have my data center and I have my one host. This is the TerraMaster NAS that I set up in my previous video. It's part of my ultimate home server project. Go ahead and check out that playlist or whatever. So on my TerraMaster NAS, I'm going to create a VM. So up here, create VM. And so it defaulted in my case to 400. It'll pick a number probably close to 100. You can pick whatever number you want here. It's only used internally within Proxmox. And we're gonna give it a name. So I'm gonna call it Home Assistant. Home Assistant. Next up, it wants us to select an installer image, but because we're importing a pre-made virtual machine, we can just say, do not use any media because we don't need a CD-ROM drive. And the guest OS should be Linux. Now for the system. So the graphics card we can leave as default, that'll be standard VGA. We don't really need graphics for our virtual machine. For the machine type, we're gonna select Q35. And for firmware, we're gonna select OVMF UEFI so that the machine can boot in UEFI mode. Now we need to add a UEFI disk. This is what stores the EFI settings and EFI keys. So we need to pick a storage location for this disk. It's gonna be pretty small. So if you followed my last tutorial, we have local ZFS, which is SSD, and we have dpool, which is our hard drive storage. I'm gonna put it on the SSD storage just because it's small. If you're installing Proxmox on your own system, local ZFS should exist if you installed via ZFS. Now, very important here, we're gonna uncheck pre-enroll keys because otherwise it's gonna enable secure boot with Microsoft keys and it's gonna fail to boot Home Assistant which doesn't support secure boot. So make sure that's unchecked. For SCSI controller, we're gonna use vert.io SCSI single. That's a good option for Linux VMs. We can enable the QEMU agent That'll help so that Proxmox can identify how much memory and processor and network addresses and things like that are actually being used by the VM. It's not strictly necessary, but it's nice to have. So next on to disks. So I'm actually going to delete this disk that it created by default. And we are gonna create disks later when we import the VM image. So for CPU, we're gonna select one socket with two cores. And instead of the default here for type, we're gonna select host. It should be all the way at the bottom. This will pass through all of the CPU flags that the host CPU supports, so we can get things like AES acceleration in the virtual machine. 
you can get a decent performance improvement by doing this. If you're using a cluster, you'll, you'll have to figure that out on your own. Now for memory, it defaults to two gigs, which is perfect. We'll just leave it at that. And for network, we're gonna say vert IO pair virtualized and default to VMBR0, which means we're gonna bridge with our host network. So it'll become part of our host network, which is usually the LAN. No VLAN tag, you can add a VLAN tag if you need to. And we'll confirm and save that. So now if I expand out on Terra here, you can see it's setting up 400. As soon as it's done, this should show up with a name. There it goes, Home Assistant. So now the VM is created, but it doesn't have a hard drive, so we need to add that. So let's go back over to the Home Assistant guide and copy the link under KVM. That should be the QCOW2 file. Now here, I'm gonna click on the Proxmox node and go to Shell. Then I'm going to use the command wget to download it. So wget, and then I paste in the address I got by copying the link from Home Assistant's website. Now we wait for it to download. So now that it's downloaded, if we ls, we can see the file there. It's called HAOS OVA, in this case version 9.4. So now we need to decompress it. So the command for that is xz-d for decompress, dash v for verbose, which gives us progress, and then HAOS OVA 9.4.qcow2.xe. And we wait for the decompression. So now that the file is decompressed, if we ls again, we can see we have the qcow2 without the xe. So now we can import that into Proxmox. And the command for this, as of Proxmox 7.3, is qm disk import. So qm space disk space import. And in previous versions of Proxmox, this was called qm import disk instead. And so now we need to give it the ID of the VM we're going to import. In this case, it's 400 for me. Then we need a file name. So HAOS OVA 9.4.qcow2. And the last option we need is what storage we want to put it under. So in my case, I'm going to put it on the SSD on the Terra Master NAS, and that is at storage local ZFS. If you have your own storage set up, you can look at the storage options here on the left. So in this case, I have dpool, iridium, local, and local ZFS. Local ZFS should be created automatically if you use ZFS during the installer. A uh, dpool, in my example, would be the hard drive, and you could use that too if you wanted. And if you're using a file-based storage, such as NFS or Samba, then you also need to add a format option. So format, and you probably want QCOW too. But in this case, with ZFS, we automatically use native ZFS block storage, so we don't need the format. So then we hit enter, and it should copy it. There we go, it's successfully imported disk. So the disk is now showing up as unused VM400 disk one. So we can delete this file now. So rm haos star, that'll delete that file. Now the file we downloaded has been deleted because the disk has been imported into ZFS. But we, don't, we didn't tell it yet how to attach it to the virtual machine. So go back to our virtual machine and click on hardware and we have a new disk here, unused disk zero. And we need to give it an attachment. So by default, it's using SCSI and VertIO SCSI single, and that's a great option. In addition, I'm going to click Advanced here, and I'm going to say SSD Emulation and Discard. And this means it's going to tell the virtual machine that the virtual machine is running on an SSD to enable trim or discard support. So when the virtual machine deletes files, it will tell the underlying storage that those blocks can be recovered or deleted. That way the virtual machine won't always be using 32 gigs of storage, it'll be using however much it's actually using on the host system. And for ZFS, we want to use no cache. We'll click add. Now the last step is to add it to our boot order. Because we added the disk after we created the VM, it doesn't know that it's bootable. So we go to options here and there's boot order. You can see that enabled is IDE, which is the CD-ROM drive and net. So we're going to enable SCSI, which is our new disk, and move it up to the top. That way it will by default boot from this disk, which is what we want. So now we should be good to start the VM. So I'm going to click Start, and then I'm going to click Console so we can see what it does. So now we see Waiting for Home Assistant CLI to be running. There we go, it's starting up. So now we should be able to go to homeassistant.local 8123. 
It's like many people have searched that before. If your computer has MDNS enabled, this should work. If it doesn't, you can go back over to Proxmox and read the IP address, which will be on the console of the VM. So here you can see, here's all the IP addresses assigned to the VM. You can type one of those in and go to port 8123 as well. So from this point on, I'm going to leave you with the Home Assistant onboarding guide. They have a great tutorial here on how to set up Home Assistant for your first time. HomeAssistant.io slash getting started slash onboarding. Link in the description for this. And this will let you start setting up your user account in Home Assistant, your location, time zone, unit preferences, and setting up some of your first devices. And where you go from here really depends on what you want to do in, in Home Assistant. So another thing you might be interested in is USB pass-through. As I showed in the intro, I have a Zigbee dongle. I'm going to pass through to my Home Assistant instance to show you how easy it is. So back here in Proxmox, I'm on the Home Assistant VM on the hardware tab. I'm going to click Add USB Device. I can either choose a port or a device ID. In this case, I probably know the device ID of the dongle, so I'm going to click on it. So in this case, it's a TI CC2531 USB, and that's my Zigbee dongle. So let's click on that and say Add. We should be able to hot plug USB devices, so Home Assistant should see that. So in my case, I had to reboot the virtual machine for it to find the new device. I'm not entirely sure why. It should be able to hot plug just fine. So coming back over to Home Assistant, going into Settings, if I turn my face off, there's a button called Add Integration. And from here, we can search Zigbee and use Zigbee Home Automation. There we go. I found our radio, TTY ACM0, blah, 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 blah. Let's do that. So in this case, this is an old dongle of mine that I've used before, so it shows up as already having settings. You would probably erase settings and start new. If you're doing Z-Wave, you would do something similar, except you would install a Z-Wave JS add-on instead of using Zigbee Home Automation. There we go. Here's our Zigbee coordinator. Passed through from Proxmox. So hopefully you're able to follow through and install Home Assistant on your Proxmox server. For me, Home Assistant is really the ultimate first step in a home lab. It's not destructive like messing with your network can be, and it gets you a really big bang for the buck in reward versus effort. Home Assistant has an excellent community that I hope you can enjoy, and I hope you can set up some nice automations to improve your life. If you want to see how I set Proxmox up on this little tiny NAS here for 300 bucks, I got a video on that link, I don't know, up here, down there, something like that. If you want to chat with me on Discord about any of these topics, I have a link down below. And as always, I'll see you on the next adventure.